In this tutorial, I'm going to go over how you can use the auto gin features in MapMaker to quickly create uh, large numbers of structures to add to your map. We'll start by typing the, the name of our map. Nicolino, if you forget the name of your map, you can always use the Browse uh, Maps button and find your map in the media folder and press enter. The map will start loading. When the map is done loading, you'll see an image of your, uh, your working map in the working map area. Our map is loaded now, so we can get started. In MapMaker, structures refers to those three-dimensional objects that you place on your map. Uh, structures might be things such as churches or factories or houses, but it also covers things such as cows or timber piles or brush or trees that you might want to place into the woods on your map. On our Nicolino map, we have three main wooded areas, one in the uh, upper left hand corner, one on the left side, and then another in the lower right. If you hover your mouse over these areas, you'll see in the information panel toward the lower right that it says that these are wooded areas. And we're going to be using the auto gen feature of MapMaker to go ahead and add three dimensional tree models to these wooded areas. We'll start by uh, going over to the center left portion of the screen and clicking on our browse structures folder and then we'll navigate to the tree folder it says nature trees this is where we'll find our tree models uh, I'm going to change this to a thumbnail view so that we can see pictures of uh, what these models uh, will look like and we can scroll down through and see the different variety that's available I think I'm going to start with uh, uh, setting uh, some 3D beach trees for our uh, map. So I click on the beach model and you'll notice that the picture comes here into our image box. I'm going to leave the name field blank and let MapMaker uh, generate a name automatically for me. Since these trees are going to be placed in areas on the map that have already been coded as woods, I don't need to uh, set a structure type. I'm going to set the value for alpha uh, at 100. You can experiment with different values. Uh, but if you get too low of an alpha for trees, you might notice some trees start having a halo appear. So I've, I've found 100 is a good setting for this value. The minimum delta setting is the minimum distance that uh, this tree will be placed from the centroid of, of any other auto-generated structures that appear uh, before it on our uh, structure list box. I'm going to go ahead and put in uh, let's say two meters uh, for this setting. The C setting tells MapMaker whether or not you want to have your entire street tree structure confined to the map color that you've chosen. If I clear this value then MapMaker will still set the trunk of the tree, the centroid of the tree model in the woods area, in the woods color I've selected, but the branches may extend out beyond that border. I'm going to uncheck that box because if you notice there's some fairly small areas that we're going to end up as wooded areas here in the uh, residential part of the map. So I'm going to leave the, the C value unchecked. The next setting is density. Uh, this is expressed as the number of objects, in our case trees, that we want MapMaker to place per square kilometer. I'm going to enter 1000 for the density for our beech tree. If the entire map were coded to the woods color terrain, uh, then we would end up with around a thousand trees generated. But since it's not, uh, MapMaker will proportionally reduce that, so we'll have fewer than a thousand, but the density is one thousand. 
The next setting is the random orientation that we want for this model. Uh, I kind of like in wooded areas, I like to have uh, pretty, pretty random. So this will randomize the tree in both the X, Y, and Z direction. So your trees will be tilted maybe a little bit. Uh, and they'll be rotated around, so give you a nice natural appearance to the woodland area. Now I hold down the shift key and left click into the woods terrain color. Mapmaker creates the name for the structure and adds it to the uh, structure list and you can see that it's generated 140 trees and it will randomly distribute those throughout that uh, woods terrain color. Even though Panzer Command has three different levels of woods, it has light woods, woods, and heavy woods terrain, this map only has uh, the one level of woods identified, uh, and that's the woods terrain itself, uh, which is the middle range. Uh, but but we're going to want quite a few more than just 1,000 trees per square kilometer uh, to fill out our woods terrain on this map. So I'm going to add some more trees. I go up to my structure button and I look at the trees available and let's go ahead and add a medium beech tree. This will give us a variety of sizes that we'll have in our woods. I click on that. You can see that it uh, has these same settings. So I'll just go over and shift click into the woods terrain color. Mapmaker has added another set of woods mo tree models to our woods, and you can see it has 140 trees that it's going to add into these woods, so that our, our total density now is actually 2,000 trees per square kilometer. So I'm going to keep adding trees. I go up to the structure folder, and this time I think I'll put in a small beech tree. Settings, keep the settings, so I shift click into the woods terrain. And I've added another set of trees to our woods terrain. Let's keep adding trees. This time we'll take a look and see what we've, else we have. I think on, on this one we'll go ahead and add uh, a birch tree. So click on the birch tree model. Simply go over and shift click into our woods terrain. And now we have the birch trees added to our, our forest. And let's keep adding trees now till we get the density that we'd like to have. You can see that we've added a few more tree models to our woods terrain. One thing I like to do is uh, have some brush in my woods terrain. So I'm going to add some brush. I go to the structure button and look and see what we might have available. Uh, I see a 3D brush one. Let's go ahead and add that model. So I click on it. I'm going to keep the same settings. So I just shift click into our woods terrain and that adds 140 3D brush one models. Let's go ahead and add another brush model, get a little bit of variety. So I select brush two shift click into the woods terrain and I now have the second brush model. I noticed some dead trees in our uh, structure folder so I think I'm going to add some character to these woods and uh, maybe put a dead tree or, or so in our, in our woods terrain. So I go in and navigate to them. Let's, uh, let's pick a uh, dead tree 4 and Go ahead and add that into our woods terrain. So I shift click and now I have uh, some dead trees in our, in our woods. Keep in mind that even though I've placed all of these tree models into the, the woods area on the left of the map, they're actually going to be distributed in all of the wood colored terrain uh, throughout our map. Another thing that I like to do is to scatter some random trees in the open areas on our map. Uh, not in our crop fields, of course, but uh, in our clear areas. So I'm going to go to the structure folder and uh, take a look at some thumbnails. And we'll go ahead and uh, maybe I'll try the alder tree. We'll put an alder tree here. I click on that. 
This time though, I do want to designate a, a structure type. Since these are being placed in areas that are colored for open terrain, I'm going to go ahead and change this uh, model to uh, be a light tree. And that way Map Maker will actually color the area right below the tree as a light woods terrain. You'll notice some different defaults have uh, come in to play. And I'll go ahead and leave those defaults. Go ahead and change the density. We don't want this to be a wooded area, so I'm not going to have it quite as dense. Uh, we'll just put in 100, 100 for this value. And I'm going to put it into this uh, dark brown color here that's open area, but it's a dark brown color and it has some in the village area too. So I'll shift click. And you can see that I've added, uh, looks like about nine trees is what uh, MapMaker expects to add. Another thing that I like to do is to add some, some grass clumps to our open terrain. Again, not in our plowed fields, but in our open terrain. So I'm going to go to the structure folder. I'm still in the trees, so I'm going to go up one level. So I'll go in and uh, I see some nature, brush, hedge, and wheat. So let's look in that folder. And I'm going to find uh, some grass clump. Uh, here's a 3D grass clump. Let's go ahead and pick this one. I need to change the structure type to none since this is really clear terrain. And, and again, we have some different defaults. I'm going to go ahead and set the density for this. Uh, let's say go ahead and do 100. And I'll shift click into this uh, lighter brown color. And that'll generate some grass clumps scattered in that color. I want to go ahead and add some variety, so I'll go back to the structures folder and uh, I think this time I'll pick that grass clump, a little bit different, and I'll shift click into the brown area and add uh, a different kind of grass clump there. I think you can see how you can use autogens to create quite a few structures for your map. We've done quite a lot to our map, so let's go ahead and build it and take a look, see how it looks in scene edit. So I'll say yes, I do want to overwrite Nicola. When the map is created, you'll see your dialogue. Before we look at this in scene edit though, you might want to notice that it has uh, generated over 1600 structures, which would have taken quite a long time to do if we were to have done each one of those structures individually. So we'll say yes. Let's take a look at it in Scene Edit. I'll widen this out a little bit and pull this map in. You don't see any trees yet because we're far out, but as we zoom in you start to see some of uh, the trees that we've generated. We'll notice some of the grass clumps that we placed in the open areas as well as some of the alder trees that we scattered in the open areas. After looking at your map, if you decide that you think you need a higher density of woods and trees in your woods, you can always go back and adjust the density or add additional trees. We'll go ahead and close scene edit. I think you can see how using the autogen process in MapMaker will save you quite a lot of time in building your maps.